thank you again for staying with us you're watching why254 we are looking into the health sector so much has been said about it and so much is happening uh, we are losing our doctors to covid 19 who is to blame the parliament uh has set stage on things are not okay are we doing well as a nation Talk to us to all our social media platforms, Y254 channel on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Before we went on break, we were speaking about the health commission and the people who should be in the health sector, not one cadre like uh, Beatrice has been uh, trying to put it here. So, Cyrus, you yes. were trying to say something about the commission. Yeah, when, uh, we you have... should correct Hillary. Right? It's healthcare workers dying, okay. not healthcare only workers. doctors. Yeah. Okay, and you see, <coughs> uh, when you have a diversified health commission, mm -hmm. then we have good uh, good representation and then uh, their views will be well uh, catered for and then also another, another thing uh, is that uh, you see everyone who goes to medical school mm -hmm. whether you're going to take nursing or you're going to study uh, a clinical officer you you are going to you you become a doctor mm -hmm. automatically so no, oh, that, that is the, the, the Kenyan perception. Yeah, and this is just a, 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 a pharmacist. <laughs> this is a clinical officer. So mm -hmm. this is a, a doctor to you. Mm -hmm. So unless these things are well uh, 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 elaborated mm -hmm. to the common Kenyan, then we shall understand who mm -hmm. are in those uh, areas. Mm -hmm. And uh, on uh, on on what she 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 said, eh, mm -hmm. the papers or the media will always say, doctor, this and this, doctor, this and this. We don't know if mm -hmm. she's a nurse or, or a clinical officer, she's a clinical officer <laughs> or she's a pharmacist. So mm -hmm. we need to get clear information so that we can help the public. And another thing is that uh, when it comes to the cry of the medical workers, mm -hmm. I love how TSC always presents itself. Not TSC, not presents itself. When it, it states that we are going to have uh, let me say uh, 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 a strike. Actually, so she we are, yes, January mm -hmm. we are going to have a strike uh -huh. because the CBA mm -hmm. that we signed has not been agreed upon. Mm -hmm. The number of teachers that we are supposed to be given, we are not given. The classrooms we don't have. You see, they, they, they state the reasons to why they are on strike. Mm -hmm. And their strike, after their strike, when they sit down, at least 70% of their demands are well met because their demands are well elaborated mm -hmm. when they are on strike. Mm -hmm. But when doctors are on strike or the health workers are on strike, I always fail to understand why are they striking? Mm -hmm. why, are they, why are they on the streets? Because sincerely speaking, when you walk to these government hospitals, the level 4 hospitals, the level 1s, all the hospitals, mm -hmm. they are pathetic. They are pathetic. A hospital that was built in 1952, like Bungoma County Hospital, mm -hmm. okay? It is still the same way it was, okay? There's no refurbishment, there's no upgrade, there's nothing, okay? Mm -hmm. When you go there, you are sick, you've taken, you've taken your sick person there, you who is not sick, you'll fall sick because of the environment <laughs> itself. <laughs> <laughs> so when these people go on strike, mm -hmm. what are their demands? Mm -hmm. And when they sit down for negotiations, okay, are, they, are their demands met? Mm -hmm. So when you state clearly your demands, mm -hmm. then everyone will understand you. Now, when you talk of the oversight thing, she mentioned about KEMSA. This thing, when you sit down and look into it, mm -hmm. the people who are doing the tendering of, uh, 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 let me say, COVID millionaires, COVID-19 millionaires, who are doing those tendering, they registered their companies in January. Okay? Mm -hmm. They were aware of all this thing. Mm -hmm. So I can tell you the truth. The doctors were aware, okay, mm -hmm. of COVID that is coming. The government was aware. And I remember mm -hmm. one former senator for Kamega, Dr. Bonnie Halwale, said on one of the TV shows that COVID was discovered and it, it is something that was ra raised, okay, mm -hmm. in the year, let me say, early 2019, okay, mm -hmm. whereby it was discovered and they say this thing 
will be a problem to the nation. So the, all the governments were aware of this pandemic. It's not that they were not aware. Mm -hmm. Okay? They were aware. The only thing or the only problem that has been there is the management. And when I mention of uh, the committees in parliament, the Public Investment Committee, Budget and Appropriation Committee, the Public uh, Accounts Committee, that is being chaired mm -hmm. by Honorable Opion and I, and I mm -hmm. okay, has failed in their mandate. Right now, we should, the parliament should be carrying out proceedings, the committees should be carrying out their proceedings mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in questioning, okay, the monies that the country has been given from the, from the donors. The COVID money, the, the country has received almost like four billion plus, or eight or seven billions and Actually, billions of money. Actually, that's right that you put okay. it, COVID money. COVID money mm -hmm. that the country has received. And remember there was the a kitty that was um, said to be given to the doctors. You mentioned something the earlier on. You mentioned something mm -hmm. earlier on mm -hmm. about the session, about the curfew. Mm -hmm. And uh, let me see, it's a session and the curfew. Mm -hmm. I raised it here when we were discussing something to do with the schools. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. I raised it here. Mm -hmm. And I will still raise it. We were going on curfew and cessation of movement for the country, okay, to ensure that health facilities are well equipped right. to manage the, the pandemic. Mm -hmm. We are going on cessation and curfew things to carry out the census and mapping on where COVID might strike people most. Okay? But right now, we are in this situation just because of failure, mm -hmm. okay, of uh, somebody doing their work properly. Mm -hmm. And that includes the health worker, okay, and the government itself, and the parliamentarians, the parliament, the public health, the parliamentary health committee mm -hmm. that is being chaired by the woman rep of Muranga. <laughs> Sabina Shege. Mm. Okay? Mm. Being chaired by the, the parliamentarian, woman rep, mm -hmm. Muranga, Sabina Shege. So, if everything is done in the best way, then we shall receive the best results. But when we ignore things right. and do them in accordance to what we think and not how we should manage them, mm -hmm. then that's how we go wrong. All right. Another thing that I want to also highlight. Uh, Senator, in the interest of time, yes. I would want us to look to a different thing so that we may wind up. Yes, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm winding up on the same, same thing. Right. On the, other, on, the, on the same, same thing to do with the health. Mm -hmm. Right now, they have raised concern about the, the ICU bed capacities. Mm -hmm. This is the time the parliament, the parliamentary committee on health, mm -hmm. should be actually carrying out oversight. On the same same things, why is it that we don't have these bed capacities up to now? Mm -hmm. Why is it that we don't have uh, mm -hmm. medical equipment in hospitals up to now? So if all these things are well oversight in the parliament, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then at least the public will be aware of. At least we'll be headed somewhere. Mm -hmm. But when monies are squandered and no question, no arrests, then there we have a problem. All right. Now, Beatrice, actually yeah. what uh, Cyrus has mm -hmm. just begun on, uh, mm -hmm. we, the bed capacity when we went on cessation of movement, yeah. uh, the counties were supposed to provide these beds. Mm -hmm. And um, we're having a report here by KMP Due, mm -hmm. and this is the latest by October 20th of no, uh, this year. Mm -hmm. uh, isolation bed capacity, which uh, assessed bed capacity was 7,644, the ICU beds were 319, non-health facilities were 3,550, total of these were 11,513. Mm. Projected county beds were 5,628, mm. ICU uh, were 173, uh, non-health facilities, the projection was 1,129 per counties and this is 6,930. So far, total bed capacity is 18,443, yet a healthcare worker dies because of an ICU bed or a good facility to be treated on. So the 18,900 are bed capacity nationwide? Yes. Now imagine we are 47 million Kenyans. Mm -hmm. So let's say this pandemic strikes 3 million people that need 
a healthcare facility. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's possible? It won't. Right? Actually, yeah. I'm saying it's even by the masses of God, somehow, mm -hmm. he has really protected Kenyans. Mm -hmm. That we should give credit to God, even if uh, the people who don't believe in God, there is a God, eh? mm -hmm. uh, who has protected Kenyans. Now, um, I don't believe lockdown was the solution to solve the pandemic. Um, WHO wrote an article uh, when Ebola struck in, mm, in West Africa. Lockdown, they, they even wrote an article and said lockdown is not the solution when containing a pandemic. Mm -hmm. uh, because it's actually even aggravated even further. Because human beings per se are not meant to be uh, confined in a place. Uh, but other measures like general hygiene, that is okay. Uh, quarantining the sick. We are quarantining healthy people. People. It's supposed to be quarantining those who are sick. So you find someone who is sick, you isolate. You don't isolate healthy people because other uh, fac uh, other issues will crop up because of, of doing that. Mm -hmm. So how they handled it and even the planning. The only problem, I, and, and I argued this, this out way before, we were putting in measures because we saw China do the same or we saw India doing the same. Mm -hmm. uh, right now is when I, I can applaud KMPD. They are trying to do research and trying to articulate based on facts what they have found out mm -hmm. so and and there's even uh, a group of uh, medics who came up with an art, uh, not an article uh, a journal where they wrote about um, the symptoms in Kenyan setting, the symptoms of COVID, because you can be getting symptoms of COVID to an Italian or a Caucasian population, now they are looking at a Ken which I applaud, that is the way things are supposed to be done, mm -hmm. so you look at your environment, you ask yourself the, the uh, key questions what should be done, so now uh, what is happening is the healthcare system is being exposed uh, when you are a chief medical officer in that county you have been hired by the county, you are the chief medical officer, you are just sitting behind the desk you're not doing anything to improve the healthcare sector now they are being exposed because trust you it's not an engineer who sits as a chief medical officer in the county right mm -hmm. when you're a medical superintendent of a county referral hospital right it's not an engineer who sits there it's a medical person who sits there, right? Mm -hmm. So when funds are brought to the institution, when procurements are done in the institution, what is your role? You see, before we blame even the governor and blame, oh, look at someone like uh, Charity Ngiri. Charity Ngiri was not even anywhere near a medic, right? But she brought health reforms in, 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 in the ministry, right? Even when she was in, not in good terms with, with the president that time, she would say, you know what? If you don't allow these funds for HIV to happen, people are going to die. Mm -hmm. And the next thing, things are being, because you need to articulate your issues. So what we are finding is that you have a whole medical superintendent in charge of a county referral. Why don't you go to the governor, come there and tell him, if we don't improve this data, it's going to collapse on our healthcare workers, right? Mm -hmm. So when you're put in there as a CS, or you're put in there as a CAS and you're for healthcare, what is your, what do you do there? Are you just a flower girl, just to be seen by people and just be over the social media? Is that your only role? But we realize that most individuals, and that's why I say leadership is a gift. Mm -hmm. Leaders are not made. Leaders are born. You can be a whole medic and, and, and you have the technical knowledge, but you are not a leader. Mm -hmm. And that is where we need to distinguish. When people are being appointed as chief medical officer, when you're appointing people to be the permanent secretary, when you're pe appointing people to lead healthcare in itself, choose people who are born to be leaders. Because, because leaders, for me, according to me, leaders are never made. Mm -hmm. Leaders are born. So once the issue of leadership is what is stifling the whole healthcare, system down because an, an, a normal leader a logical leader a well trained leader who who knows what it means to be leadership mm -hmm. by seeing 18,000 beds that in a population of 47 million that tells you there's already a problem so i'm expecting if you are the chief medical officer and you're doing a budget you're not just doing a budget of recurrent expenditures just to pay people salaries and i agree with him when when healthcare workers stay all they think is salaries you see i was telling somebody right now the country is broke how sustainable is the increment of salaries in another five years? Is it possible? Mm -hmm. Yet we have a country that is dependent on taxes. 
it will reach a point that instead of hiring more doctors or hiring more nurses, the government, based on their budget, they'll only sustain only those few and prevent hiring more because it's more expenditure. So we really need to reason and sit down and ask ourselves, apart from fighting for just salaries, health reform is not only through salaries. I think we need to sh shift the mindset. Health reforms is whereby does even the government have a system of preventive health care? Right now, the reason why I feel many healthcare workers are also being affected with COVID is overload, workload, workload and fatigue. Why? Because you maybe you're only four doctors in that case scenario, right? Mm -hmm. And you need to shift because you see you're being exposed very frequently. And sometimes this condition, you need to be away for at least 14 days or so. But you find because you're only four of you and the government can't even hire more people, what happens? Your exposure rate is increased. Mm -hmm. So ideally what the government should have done actually was that during this uh, money that they were given by WHO and other agencies that gave them money, they would even have hired people on a temporary basis. So that in case, instead of four doctors, it would be like 15. So that they're able to do in shifts. So if one, one soldier is, uh, is asymptomatic, they can. Mm -hmm. Number two, when they were even procuring their PPEs, did even someone ask themselves, well, did you lose a maswali? For example, what is the exposure rate for each because even the cleaner who cleans the isolation room is already exposed and that cleaner may need PPEs. Mm -hmm. So they would have calculated how, how long does a, does a cleaner take within the isolation room to clean that room. So what kind of PPE should they wear? How, how, how long or what is the duration of a nurse attending a, a, a COVID patient? And the doctor's exposure, the same thing. Then they are able to say for each doctor, at least adequately, they need five PPEs based on one. So what I'm saying is that they should have gone to the level, down to the, and that's what I'm telling you, don't, one kada cannot just be the one making decision. You need economists, you need people on board. So that one person would have said, one COVID patient mm -hmm. actually consumes this number of PPEs. That helps you in proper budget. Because I could also, we could be blaming individuals here that where did the money go, but then maybe they under budgeted and then prices were high. And then even the quantity of PPEs that were even procured was less. Because we realize maybe one COVID patient is actually consuming 50 PPEs because of the number of individuals that is actually attended to that person. Remember, I have told you, even the cleaner, the one who is cleaning that room, mm -hmm. who is also exposed. The lab technician who is doing the test, that's a lab technician. This is not even a, dog, a lab technician who is doing the test. is also exposed, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So the, even the, the, the midwife who is delivering a mother with COVID is also exposed. So look at the different individuals being ex by that one COVID patient walking in into that facility. How many people have been? Even the watchman at the gate is already exposed because that person is walking into that hospital. That watchman is already exposed. Mm -hmm. the, where they are going to be screened by those people, uh, are, they, are they even on, uh, with PPEs? No. Mm -hmm. Right? I was even shocked in one uh, private institution. Right. Uh, apparently we have to hang up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in, in one private institution, uh, I even had a better mask than even the nurses who are uh, attending patients there. So I asked myself, do we even ask ourselves the quality of the PPs? Because healthcare workers were complaining about the quality of PPEs being procured. Mm -hmm. So do we procure to procure? You know, it, it reaches to a level. We just do things for the sake of doing things. But do we do things with a better plan and we have individuals mm -hmm. who are able to force, to, to see through the whole plan and ensure at the end of, when it's all said and done, mm -hmm. we all benefit. Because they forgot one thing. Even the MPs, I'm sorry to say, I think one was saying they need to be provided helicopter services. I say that is a foolish MP because that day there could be no jet fuel or, 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 or even a pilot on that, uh, on that day. So what they should have done is sit down and say we are all together in this. All so right. how can we solve this problem for mm -hmm. all of us mm -hmm. to benefit? So you're not just helping healthcare workers. As you help the healthcare workers, mm -hmm. you're also helping yourself as you are helping the public. So all as right. I say, yeah. uh, my parting shot, when you do good, mm -hmm. you do good to thyself. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much, uh, Saida Zanda, because for coming. Apparently, we are out of time. We would have continued with the, this uh, discussion, but... 
teams we will end it there thank you so much for keeping us company we'll be taking a short break i'll be back again here with an interview on we'll be looking into the career building your career while still uh, taking undertaking uh, your cause uh, stay tuned they have been my guest beatrice Cairo, health economist and political analyst cyrus elito political analyst and an auditor thank you so much ladies and gentlemen for coming and thank you for trying to articulate those uh, ideas and putting things into perspective. See you on the other side after this break. Thank you so much for staying with us. If you just tuned in, this is Y254. Y in the morning breakfast show time for current affairs and politics as well. We are looking into the health sector, what has been going on. We have seen members of parliament crying. Uh, because of the policies or the predicament that is facing the medics in this country, yet they are the people who should be doing their best to ensure that we are safe. But we'll be getting to business in a bit in that situation. Very good morning. My name is Edreva Hilary. I'm joined by Beatrice Cairo, health economist and a political analyst as well, and Cyrus Elito, a political analyst and an auditor. To my sub about and say, where we are as a nation. Good morning, gentlemen. <laughs> Good morning, Hilary. Karibuni sana. Asante. All of it has been a while since we were last here together, and I want to begin with you, Cyrus. Yes. Vitu zimekuaji kwako. Are you proud to be a Kenyan? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Kenyan, mm -hmm. by birth, mm -hmm. by everything, and I'm proud. Mm -hmm. I cannot shy off being a Kenyan. Right. The only thing that I want is, or the only thing I desire mm -hmm. is things to be done in the right way. Mm -hmm. We need accountability. We need responsibility. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. These are the things that we need to have. Mm -hmm. And uh, I always say, accountability is not an option. It's a must. We have to be accountable for everything that we do. Mm -hmm. We have to be accountable in each and every little resources that we are given. Okay. Especially as a country, we have to be. All right. Beatrice, Kenya is my country. No, Kenya is my country. Mm -hmm. Born and bred in this country. Mm -hmm. I, I love my country. Personally, I love my country because I know it has a lot of potential. Mm -hmm. uh, only that we are just wasted by a few hooligans mm -hmm. who who stand to say they are leaders, but in actual sense they are just hooligans, thieves. Uh, but the, the country in itself has a great potential. All I want to see in the near future is that we change the culture of Kenyans. We change our value system. Okay. Yeah, we have, you, you know when you go to Japan there's a certain culture. Uh, the, when you go to India there's a certain culture. I think it's high time we as a country had a certain culture in how we govern ourselves, in how we treat each other as, as individuals because right now Kenyans are bitter people there yeah? when you go to KOT they are very bitter it's because of they've been raped by their government every single day for the last 50 years they've been just been raped 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 to the point now uh, they are at a position they are just bitter grieving angry and angered so mm -hmm. I, I look forward to such a um, to a country whereby the government loves its people, leaders love their people, mm -hmm. and leaders are sacrificial, not to be selfish and lovers of themselves, but actually to be visionary and love the, 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 the people themselves, and also consider that they are part of the society. Okay. Yeah. I just want to, <laughs> mm -hmm. to look into what she has just said. Mm -hmm. You see, leaders don't impose themselves on us. Mm -hmm. They don't. We, we have a, pal a ballot paper mm -hmm. during the election day. Mm -hmm. The ballot paper has a number of people on it. Mm -hmm. You choose who will lead you. You choose who will govern you. Mm -hmm. On that ballot paper, we have each and every one mm -hmm. with their own character. Mm -hmm. So the, the choices we make are the consequences that we suffer. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so unfortunately, if, if, if it has happened. Wrong, Everyone we voted if, in if, is if, wrong. If you make wrong, wrong, wrong choices, mm -hmm. right. then you have consequences there are consequences mm -hmm. the one we are having right now mm -hmm. so let us not complain but mm -hmm. but, but it, 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 it is us to be very intelligent uh -huh. it is our responsibility but how can and responsibility uh, starts with you and i and that on can that and that can election. only happen once fast and, you see, fast and foremost and the worst thing mm -hmm. is eh, when i hear so many people mm -hmm. say i want vote come 2022 <laughs> then the, you are the worst person you are the worst enemy mm -hmm. of this country mm -hmm. you should practice or exercise mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. your mandate 
as a Kenyan citizen. Mm -hmm. In Australia, if you don't vote, it's a crime. I think okay. such a such a rule, such a such a law should be introduced in the country. All right. But or else Fair enough. <laughs> yeah, but, but they cannot, uh, you can put laws, but if the mindset of people has not changed, it will not benefit. Mm -hmm. So the reason why we choose the leaders we choose is because of our mindset. I'll give you an example. If somebody has never been exposed to brush their teeth, for example, mm -hmm. they may be thinking the way a smelly mouth smells is the norm of the day. So until you're introduced to brushing of teeth, and uh, fresh breath, you'll never understand how, why a smelly mouth is <laughs> bad. So until people so change So what, what, what we, have we people I, I, not I, I been always, exposed always, to? Hillary, I've always said this, eh? Mm -hmm. I've always said this, eh? <laughs> yes, not everyone is informed. Right? <laughs> not right. everyone is informed. Mm -hmm. But it is my responsibility, it is your responsibility, her responsibility, okay? Mm -hmm. To carry out what you call civic education to our people. Right. Let us let us let us engage our people through civic education, and we shall have good choices in the near future. Okay. You, we know you, what, you're speaking we, of we civic know, education, and I know there's right. BBI going we, on. We know what's right. <laughs> we know what's wrong. Uh -huh. We are informed. Right. There are people who are not informed. Mm -hmm. Let me go to my village, interior. Mm -hmm. Okay. There are people who are not informed. Right. So these people need civic education. Oh. They are poor, still putting on t uh, tattered clothes. Okay. It's not that they can't accept the clothes. The problem is, it can't reach them from mm -hmm. where they are. Mm -hmm. What do they need? They need what you call civic education. So if we carry out civic education, when it comes to ele ele electoral laws, when it comes to taxation laws, mm -hmm. when it comes to our own constitution, mm -hmm. let us enlighten our people, mm -hmm. okay? How to choose good leaders, how to have good leaders in place, how to have good governance. Okay. Let us enlighten our people. All right. And then we shall have the good leaders or the good leadership that we have. Mm -hmm. yeah, so we're in agreement. We change our mindset, and we change how we view things, and, uh, and, and changing of mindset is for individual citizens to take initiative, initiative to desire great things, to desire bigger things for the country, not to, to look at mediocrity and applaud and clap hands. Actually, when an MP does a mediocre work, you should shout down at him. And even the next, they should not be even be appointed uh, being a leader <laughs> again. But what we do, we, somebody cre uh, like, uh, what is this? <laughs> this Machakos governor creates a road for three months, and we're all over internet applauding him. Then three months down the line, the road is not even functioning. We need to demand uh, what is it? We need to uh, demand the right services. We need to demand quality services. Mm -hmm. We need to demand excellent services. I, I, I have a I feeling we will continually I digress here. Yeah. Eh? <laughs> uh -huh. You see, you many guys have always castigated and thrown stones mm -hmm. at people of Mulembe. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. That we are not. We are not. Uh, we, 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 they say we are not united. I always say mm -hmm. we, are, we are. We are united. Mm -hmm. We always know what we want, okay? But when I go to the ballot, <laughs> I don't need to vote just as the way. Let uh, 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 me say, a king, a kingpin has told me, and the, the, mm -hmm. the, the best thing we don't have a kingpin now. We don't vote for a suit. <laughs> and it is in Western Kenya, okay? Where you find uh, we have all the parties represented, mm -hmm. okay? We right. have all the parties represented. Mm -hmm. But when you go to Central, where my beautiful friend comes from, mm -hmm. okay, we have one uh, one party. You see, these are the problems that we have in this country. Right. Let each and everyone practice their democratic right. I should not I should not be coerced. Mm -hmm. I is a must. Mm -hmm. I vote for this party. Mm -hmm. When it does not fit my bill, mm -hmm. when it does not fit my, 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 my demands, mm -hmm. let us be uh, smart when it comes to election. All right. Now, speaking of leadership, when coronavirus hit the country, <coughs> cessation of movement from Nairobi and other co counties were put in place. And the directive was the, the county, county uh, leadership will come up with a solution and provide more than, are they 300 beds, ICU beds, <laughs> and isolation. And then here we are as a nation, doctors are dying, 
one lack of enough beds icu beds and we have lost a good number of our doctors because of um, the working environment that was i don't know what uh, has brought to this but we went on cessation to enable us and counties to have beds then we hear there are no beds what does that mean is it that or the counties never attained those beds. We'll be looking into some of this. Um, the report that has been provided by KMPDU. But before that, we want to listen in to what happened in, in the uh, this special sitting by KMPDU and where Dr. Nikal was crying for what has been happening to the medics. If we could have that clip now. for the National Assembly's Health Committee to seek a solution to challenges bedeviling the health sector. The doctors castigating the Ministry of Health for its alleged failure to protect medics from contracting COVID-19. That the doctors working in the COVID-19 facilities hired through the Ministry and Public Service Commission were put on six months contract, which should be ending in February. And their condition as they speak is that there is no cover, they've not been paid, and there's no assurance of compensation. Because the compensation that is going to be announced has excluded all these doctors on contract terms. The meeting would however turn emotional after some members of parliament were moved to tears over the plight of Kenya's healthcare workers. It is very sad. Actually, you go to Kemsa because they have told us level one, level two, and level three. Actually, there is no nothing like a PPs. And when you go to Kemsa, I think the size of this building here is full of PPs, and medical staff are dying there because of lack of these things. What is wrong with this? What is wrong with this? Uh, with us as Kenyans and as a government? I wish we were having this meeting in State House with the President chairing. <laughs> then all those who he listens to can make their contribution. That is, you remember my definition of the government. The President and the people he, li he listens to. Those are the people we want to listen to this. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't like this. <laughs> Easy, easy. You, you can't do that to your doctors and your health workers. It's not fair. It's not fair. I take it easy. We hear you, Mishmua. It's not easy. It's not fair. We know, Mishmua. It's what painful. Doctor, it's what painful, painful. Doctor. All right. So that's the situation you see uh, members of parliament crying because of the situation of our doctors. I've heard and I've seen so many critics, especially on social media and of mm. course even in the dailies. Uh, he himself, Dr. Nikal, has been in the Ministry of Health, he has been the CPS, he has been like there and now people are like, <laughs> you're not crying for the right reasons. But there's something he made, uh, the comment he made that that meeting should have been done in status because the president, he knows who he listens to. What do you make of this, Cyrus? The meeting, should, when you tell me the meeting should have, uh, could have been held in the state house. Mm -hmm. uh, I take it uh, to be like uh, somebody does not know their responsibility. Mm -hmm. What is the role of the MP? Mm -hmm. Representation. Legislate. Oversight. Okay? Mm -hmm. When we talk of representation, the people who voted for you, okay? You are representing them in that house. They sent you to represent them. Mm -hmm. They have their needs in that constituent. So they, they need their needs to be tabled in the parliament, okay? Now, when you, when you present them on the, on the, on, in, the, in the floor of the house, mm -hmm. what you're doing is also representation. Then you do legislation coming up with the laws, okay? Mm -hmm. On the same, same bill or on the same same items that these people have sent you to do. Then when it comes to oversight, a parliament needs to oversight each and every uh, organ of the government. When it comes to judiciary, when it comes to executive, when it comes to even the public mm -hmm. itself, it needs to oversight. 
And that's why to some, uh, uh, to some extent when you, you follow parliament proceedings, you'll hear parliamentarians discuss how um, uh, a baby was shot and killed and the family is in limbo. So this is, this is, what, this is the representation of what should be done by the parliament. Mm -hmm. Now when uh, a person has failed in their roles and says the president should come uh, or this meeting should be held in parliament, I know, in, in state house, mm -hmm. then this, the, 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 uh, we are lying to Kenyans. Because one, these are your responsibilities. And when you're in that house, mm -hmm. you allowed the executive to come and uh, to come and trample on you so that it become rubber stamps. Mm -hmm. You are just rubber stamps to the executive. When the executive says this, you go by it. You don't question. Mm -hmm. You don't uh, call for accountability. You don't do what... When the budget is brought on the floor of the table, who passes the budget? The mm -hmm. parliamentarians. Right. Okay? Dr. Nikal is not new to the system. Okay? Mm -hmm. He's in the Public Health Committee because he has been in the Ministry of Health. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. And he has worked on uh, various uh, capacities, okay? As a civil servant. So when you come and uh, cry or shed tears mm -hmm. just because you're emotional or just because somebody has just uh, told you something emotional, then you shed tears, mm -hmm. like crocodile tears. Mm -hmm. It does not add up. What we need is the responsibility. What we need is the accountability. What we need is mm -hmm. uh, checks and balances mm -hmm. that are in place. Mm -hmm. okay. The budget that you pass, okay, mm -hmm. through the budget and appropriation committee that still sits in the parliament, right. okay, mm -hmm. which was being chaired by Ishugwa, the uh, Kikuyu MP, mm -hmm. who was the former, okay, mm -hmm. uh, chair. Chair, chair. And then uh, we have the public accounts committee. Okay, mm -hmm. we have the Public Investment Committee. These are some of the serious committees in Parliament. Okay, whereby the other committees, the Agriculture Committee, the Judiciary Committee, the Health Committee, should work closely with, should interrogate mm -hmm. when it comes to matters on budget allocation. Because everything that we see here, Mm -hmm. Every fall that we see here falls in the parliament. If we have better legislation, mm -hmm. if we have better mm -hmm. uh, oversight mm -hmm. roles that are played well by the parliamentarians, then the country will be safe. Okay. I want to borrow a leaf from the, uh, uh, from the Br British parliament. And I want to, to, to look and diverge into the, the, the issue of uh, uh, Brexit when it was being, how it was being handled. Mm -hmm. If you can remember very well, it was handled very well by the parliamentarians. It was, it came to pass, it came, it came through. Why? Because the parliamentarians did their role well. Mm -hmm. Look at the America itself, okay? Because why am I using these examples? Because we copy them in many things, okay? Mm -hmm. And we have to, because it's a world, and you want to, to, to do what others do. Now, when you look at America, look at, uh, look at it right now. We have an issue there where Trump has decided not to concede defeat. Mm -hmm. But see, the things are going on slowly by slowly, the way they are supposed to go. When, right. when, when the, the parliamentarians, the, the Congress, questioned the, the swearing in of the, of the, of the, of the, of the, the chief judge, who, the, 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 person who, the, the, the person who died, eh? mm -hmm. then they were saying, no, this person should not be sworn in at the moment. Let us finish the election, then we swear in another chief justice. Mm -hmm. So these things brought a quagmire. But the, the parliamentarians play their own role, the way they are supposed to play. The problem with uh, Kenya, not only Kenya, but Africa at large, okay? Mm -hmm. The problem with Kenya, not only Kenya, but Africa at large, we, we failed to play our roles on over, when it comes to oversight. All right, let mm -hmm. me hear from you, Beatrice. <coughs> What do you make from the cries of the members of parliament mm -hmm. and then the argument that uh, there are no PPEs and mm -hmm. yet we mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. KEMSA, there's a 
case going on yeah. uh, they procured more than they needed yeah. and there's a question on that so w w what do you make of this uh, first and foremost uh, i would say healthcare in itself is a dynamic uh, market it's it's not like where you sell bananas or where you sell apples because the one that you're selling apples these are you can define a very good straight line but when it comes to healthcare it's dynamic it's it's uh, very subjective healthcare is very subjective because it's dependent on uh, an individual. In, in essence, when you are sick, only who is, the person who is sick can describe uh, the level of pain. No, nobody else can perceive. But if it's apples, I can say here there are 10 apples. But when it comes to pain or how I feel about a condition, it's very, very much subjective. Uh, when you look at the healthcare sector in this country, there is a lot of issues. And the issues both come from the healthcare workers' side and also from the government side. And unless those both sides are addressed, there is no way I am seeing any health reforms in this country. Why am I saying that? Mm -hmm. When you look at the healthcare, sec uh, healthcare workers' side, you will look for a very long period of time when it comes to leadership position. Only one cadre is given those position, uh, leadership position. Mm -hmm. so, uh, oh, so I usually say when you only give one cadre, that drew out, what happens? They end up having blind spots. For example, you find maybe the CS, uh, like Dr. Mailu is the CS, then you have the, uh, the permanent, uh, the um, director of medical science, another medical doctor, uh, and then when you look at even the counties, all doctors, meaning even in that meeting in parliament, it was only doctors coming to represent their views. So in healthcare, we don't only have one cadre. We have nurses in the healthcare sector who are healthcare workers. We have dentists who are in the healthcare sector who are Healthcare workers. We have pharmacists in the healthcare sector who are healthcare workers. We have lab technicians. We have um, uh, sonographers. When you look at the array of the healthcare setting, you cannot have one cadre representing everything within the healthcare. And that is where I feel is the major problem, major gap. I'll give you a reason. Kemsa was being headed uh, by that doctor, what is he, he's a medical doctor. Ma, Kemsa, ma, ma, ma yeah, my, Kemsa my in itself, mm -hmm. you should be having a pharmacist leading that institution because they're the ones who understand the drugs and procurement. But why do we have one cadre representing all aspects of leadership when it comes to healthcare sector? What we end up having is blind spots. Mm -hmm. And that is what most people don't want to address, whereby we put one cadre at a superior level and others at an inferior level. Mm -hmm. For me, my, my belief is this. Different cadres are gifted technically differently. There is what the doctor can address, there is what the nurse can address, there is what the pharmacist can address, there is what the dentist can address. All gifted different technically, but all important. Because you cannot exclude a doctor, you cannot exclude a pharmacist, you cannot exclude a dentist. Mm -hmm. So what I, I, would, uh, I would request the government, or people in the policy making, you can have a CS. Preferably, we, I would prefer having an economist, even if they are political, but at least have an economical background mm -hmm. heading that healthcare department. Then, instead of having director of medical services uh, who advises maybe the CS, why don't you have a health management team? which all these cadres form a round table because mm -hmm. the issues of one and the issues of they can come together and then give advice uh, to the uh, to the the cs because we have a cast who is also still a medical doctor who who sits in the cabinet of the president right mm -hmm. so you all of a sudden when you realize one cadre is the one in leadership position throughout you'll end up having blind so because the actually i told somebody maybe maybe next time let's have a ps who is a nurse maybe leadership uh, would come through that direction because just because someone has a title does not guarantee leadership that mm -hmm. is the perspective we need to change from that we can have a dentist who is a very good leader and lead uh, lead in, uh, in 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 transforming healthcare then even having a medical doctor you can have a nurse who is a very good in leadership you can have a clinic officer very good in leadership until we address those issues on the healthcare workers side mm -hmm. because when doctors represent themselves alone what happens to the clinic officers, what happens to the nurses and what happens to even the lab technician. When media houses are writing articles, they just say doctors. I ask them, what about the other healthcare workers? I believe we should be writing healthcare workers are being affected by COVID. Mm -hmm. Healthcare workers are dying. Healthcare workers, you know, instead of using just one type, it, the healthcare system is not only, doctors just form a portion mm -hmm. of the healthcare system. It's wide. There are many people involved behind the scenes when it comes to the healthcare. So until we shift that mindset, and I've given example in the UK 
you find that the parliamentarian who is in charge, the minister who is in charge of health in the UK, mm -hmm. they don't have a, 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 a CS or, or what is it called? They don't have a director of medical. What they do is that there's a chief medical officer, there's a chief pharmacist, there's a chief nurse, there's a chief dentist, there's a, depending on the kind, then these ones come together and advise. So the chief nurse will say, this is what we're experiencing. The chief medical officer explains the same, the chief dentist, and every other kind, they come together. And there's even chief researcher when it comes to healthcare and scientists. Mm -hmm. But in Kenya, we have only ballooned to one kada that is the one to lead. And we know most of them, they only maybe, uh, they, are, they are talented in one aspect. Mm -hmm. So for a rich re health reforms, all cadres must come together. It cannot be one cadre being at the forefront. So mm -hmm. having said that, and that side of, of healthcare has been addressed, then when it comes to government, I'll ask this question. So every time a budget is done, mm -hmm. every time money is provided, but where does the money go, right? Where does that money go? So in the issues of uh, the county governments, the greatest issue they had is that Treasury had not released funds to the county governments. So there is no money to pay salaries, right? There is no money to, not, not only even healthcare worker salaries, even county workers were not being salaries because I believe everybody should be paid uh, irrespective whether you are a lawyer or whatever, but everybody should be paid. So it just tells you one critical thing, that we are poor managers, we are uh, we have leaders who, who don't have the technical know-how on how to understand the budgets. All they are very much selfish to the point that they don't care that the man, the, uh, the funds that they are misusing mm -hmm. or stealing is actually streaming down the line all the way to the to the public person. So until uh, we have, like, I will, I'll, I'll conquer with my brother here. We have parliament that oversees. We have the Senate that oversees, that it can call the president and ask him. You see, like in, in the U.S., they were calling Trump, address yourself. Why is this and this happening? We need a strong legislature. We need a strong judiciary system okay. to, uh, to counter-check the, the Right now, we should be, uh, the people who are heading camps should be behind bars. Yeah? It's called remand. Eh? They should mm. be in remand, waiting for a case. Because mm. isn't, it doesn't make sense. You procure all those, uh, you procure all those, uh, all those uh, equ equipment, and PPEs, they are stuck, they're in a storage somewhere. And then there's a doctor or a nurse somewhere dying mm -hmm. out of COVID. Right. So until we change uh, that dynamic, uh, the, the, that aspect whereby you are caught on the wrong as we wait for your case to be handled, uko, remand. You're somewhere in remand before mm -hmm. that issue is being addressed. Uh, though I would say the healthcare workers have a right, whatever they are they're articulating, it's true. But this is already a sign that the country is broke. This right. is just a clear, clear sign that the country is broke. And why is it broke? Because people misappropriated funds. And unfortunate thing is that even among us, the same healthcare workers, they were part of the leadership, part of the system, uh, just like Dr. Nikal was trying to cry, he was part of the system, he has been uh, part of uh, in, in, in the healthcare industry as a leader. Mm -hmm. But what do they do? They eat together with those who are corrupt. So uh, as, as much as healthcare workers are crying and, and shouting that leadership should be changed, mm -hmm. they should begin with themselves. They should actually quench, question that doctor who was in uh, cancer, who is one of their colleagues, they should be holding him accountable. Right? Mm -hmm. I, I, the, the way it's supposed to be, if, if you are a nurse and you find one of your leader nurse is doing the wrong thing, then you as members and colleagues should hold that person accountable. I hope that doctor in, in, in the who was heading in cancer is not a member of KMPDU because KMPDU should hold him accountable. Should even take him to court because if he's a member of that and should even terminate his membership. That is the correct thing to do. But you cannot be castigating the government here but one of your members is also doing the wrong thing on the other end, right? All so right. we uh, need to look <laughs> into that. Very true. Uh, I, I, I want to uh, concur with her from what she has raised. Eh? Mm -hmm. And uh, she has raised very valid points, and uh, from what uh, I, I, I can sum up from my point, uh, from my, mm. where I'm seated, is that uh, she's now talking about having a diversified health commission. Yes. Mm -hmm. A diversified health commission whereby everyone is on board. Mm -hmm. A public person who is not a doctor 
is involved. Uh, are you alluding to what is in the BBI proposal? Uh, 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 you see, what, uh, you see, you see we, are not, we are not discussing about the BBI thing. Mm -hmm. We are discussing about the fact mm -hmm. on the ground. And I want to borrow a leaf uh, about the Judiciary Service Commission. Mm -hmm. Look at the Judiciary Service Commission. It has a member who is not a lawyer, who is not an advocate, who is not a, uh, any person who knows the law, but the member of the public. Okay, like Professor Mugenda, does she know law? Mm -hmm. has, she, has she gone to school to study law? No, but she's a member of JEC. Mm -hmm. We have other persons also in the same same JEC. Mm -hmm. Now, if we have a health commission, look at also TSC. Nancy Mashera was not a teacher. She's never gone to school to teach, mm -hmm. but she's the one heading teacher service commission. So when you have diversified opinions from all angles mm -hmm. then the, the 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 system itself will be well managed yeah. but we, when we have only one type of persons in that area mm -hmm. then the system will become bloated yes. all right i want you and to hold on that thought we, mm -hmm. we 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 take a very short okay. commercial break uh, when we come back we will, uh, we will address that and then we will look into the deaths that have been reported among uh, medical officers of course kenyans have lost their lives but now we are looking into health sector okay. we take a very short break please stay with us <laughs> 